Chapter 57 Steve returned to the bench where the lady was still crying. I'm sorry about that. My friend is worried about me and I should have been kinder. But I'm angry. People who weren't there have no idea and they offer meaningless platitudes when they haven't got a clue what I'm going through. Mrs Shaheed, I wish I could have saved your husband. Mr Lewis, don't be too harsh on your friend. Thank you for trying and I know it was God's plan and he was not alone when he left us. You're a good man, sir. May love travel with you. Now I think you have someone else you need to talk to. After speaking to you, I can now find peace. They embraced, friends for a reason, before going their separate ways. Steve went to the office, but it was locked. New York was shut down, and he assumed that both Jackie and Devon had finally gone home. Knowing where he needed to be, he headed back towards the hotel. Isla was in a bar with Sally. Steve knew he should go over, but before he had the chance, she came towards him. I'm sorry, Steve. I panicked. I saw you. I came. I I don't know how to help you. Arlie, you don't need to apologise. I'm not going to explain right now. I need to sleep. I'll call you later. Steve went in one lift while Isla waited alone and broken. Another lift arrived and she went to her room. This was not good. Her man was in crisis. She fell into bed, pulling her legs into her body. Her grieving was interrupted by a knock at the door. Steve. He did want to talk. Isla jumped up, rushing to open the door to let him in. It was Sally. A welcome face, but not the one she was expecting or hoping to see. Okay, what's the problem that you don't want to talk about? She walked in without invitation, handing Isla the drink she left on the bar. I don't know what to do. He stopped talking. He's all broken and removed himself. Rather than turning to me for comfort, I seem to be in his way. You don't always need words to express yourself, Isla. You can stick with this, but you need to remember the rules of love. It takes two, and if you have the chance to get out, consider taking it before he gets worse. Sally was making more sense than Isla had figured out for herself. Isla, you don't know what happened, but there's clear evidence that something awful happened to him and he's fucked up by it. That's not your fault. It's not his fault, but he may be a different man coming out of this. Sally was careful not to lay blame. Neither of them was at fault. You can't help who you fall in love with, but without the love and romance, it can't work. Something built on this kind of shit will struggle to survive. The little you told me about his last relationship should tell you that. Isla hadn't given Greta a thought in comparison to her relationship with Steve. It's more than that. I can support us through what's happening now and we can get back to the romance when he's better. I have to try, Sally. Isla pushed Hope into the conversation, clutching at straws in her heart. She knew she had to try. What if he can't be pulled from the rubble? You're too young for this, Isla. You have a whole life in front of you. It's tragic. You've landed where you are, but the man you've fallen for is fucked up. He is fucked up, Isla. And if you don't want it to pull you down as well, you need to put some distance between you both. Just for now, give him the space to know what he wants to do next. If he wants you, he'll come for you. But darling, don't be too available. Let him grieve and work out for himself when the time's right. Sally appeared far more helpful than Isla had expected. Now alone, the daytime light outside was a stark contrast to the darkness Isla had suddenly wrapped herself in.